This is how to take an action based on formatting. This works for all sorts of things, bold, italics, underlines, colors, and you can do any action. You can copy text, move text, email text, delete text, make PDFs, whatever you want as the action. The example I'm using is to copy all rows that are stricken out. So here's the base data that I've created to practice this. Really simple table, and we can see here these three rows are stricken out. All right. Now what we want to do is copy over these three rows to here. Now, I want to be clear. I would never, ever set up a situation where I have to do it this way if I have control and power over the data. Reason being, I believe that formatting should not be data. Rather, it should visualize data. What I mean by that? Right now, whatever this strikeout means, the strikeout itself is conveying the data. It is not relying on something else. So let's say there's some, I don't know, some tournament and these three persons are going to be moving out. That's what I named the sheet, out. It would be much better and much easier to access and use this data if, instead of just using this check mark, the, the strikeout, we had a column called out or removed or lost or whatever that is. And then put an X here or a yes or something like that. And then use conditional formatting. Conditional formatting has a strike through option, right? So we can say if there's an X in column D, then strike out A through C. And now we can actually do something with that because we can filter based on column D equals filter A through C, where D through D equals X. Right, that's really easy. I had four minutes on. That's really easy to do. And now we can actually see what does that strikeout mean? That strikeout means they lost. But if we don't have that, then we just have to know that a strikeout means lost and the computer doesn't know anything based on that. This is just a marker on a map, but the computer can't translate that. We just have to know what that means ourselves. So I would never be in a situation, I would never put myself in a situation where I have to do it this way, but there are many times when I'm working with other data and times when I don't have control over the data that this is what I'm dealt with. So we work with it. Extensions, app script and again if we could access the the values by function that would be awesome by formula that would be awesome but there is no equals is strike through or simply strike through or bold nope or format those aren't there so we have to go around the app script method first thing i'm doing is declare my spreadsheet and my first sheet. Great. Next, I'm going to go ahead and get the data. No, because we're doing formatting, I don't actually wanna just get the data. I need to get the data, the values. Let me say values. I need to get the values and I need to get the formatting. Here's how we're gonna do that. Const r equals ss.get data range and in this case we can take the entire range that's great const r values equals r dot get values and const r formats equals r dot get oh wait there is no there's number formats but that's not what we want because number formats is things like is this currency? Is this percentage? How many decimal points? What we actually want is something that has all of the text or the cell formatting. And that is going to be contained in rich text values. These are awesome. Returns the rich text value. Yeah, thank you. I was hoping for more information than that. So rich text values is going to include not just the values themselves, but also a lot of formatting information about it. That's what rich text is. Rich text is just, you know, the text. Rich text includes the colors and the bolding and the italics and everything like that. So we can actually show that our formats. This is an array, so I'm going to do 0, 0 to get the first element in the array get text styles 
and inside the textiles we have copy the entire textile we've done that before get the font family the font size the foreground color bold italic strike through underlines all this stuff is contained in there so now we can access it and we can use it and we can do something with that awesome I want to go through and get all three or however many rows there are that are strikeouts so we're going to loop through the formats we're not going to loop through the values because that doesn't have the data we need for let I in our formats if our formats and we're working in an array remember so we're going to do the first column or we're going to do this row since arrays are row then column which is a little bit confusing because I'm used to thinking a1 is column and then row but then when we move to scripting it's row and then column but that's just what we're dealing with so we're gonna get the first or the the current row and the first column since it is zero indexed dot get text style dot is strike through that's gonna return a true or false so I don't need to say if that equals true it just it is going to return a boolean true or false and for right now let's just log out what we're gonna log out is our values now there are probably a more ways to go about this but the reason I'm doing it this way is because I try to do the philosophy of get once and set once obviously sometimes you have to get a couple more times because you have different ranges but or different sheets or something like that as much as possible let's keep those gets and those sets to a minimum so we're going to log our values we want the same position and they're occupying the same range so I zero and that is going to return the value already so let's run that perfect Harrison Dula Mothma Mon oh that's funny I wrote Mothma Mon instead of Mon Mothma oh well and Dangar Harrison Dula Mothma Mon and Dangar let's actually see what the entire row looks like so instead of returning the first element in the array or the first column in the row let's just return the entire row so now we can see it includes the brackets it is a full two uh, dimensional array that we return now rather than just seeing it here I actually want to do something with that namely I want to copy the names and other information to this out sheet in order to do that let's first declare const s out equals sh dot get sheet by name out and then because I only want to push data once to that sheet I'm going to create an out object that's an array and then we're going to push the rows that are stricken through into that array out dot push our values I excellent now technically I could probably get around this double array system because in our formats our formats I zero dot get text it has the text itself the reason I'm not doing this is because I can't easily run that for the entire array unless we map it at that point we're slower more we're less efficient than using r dot get values so I could do it without having to call two gets from the spreadsheet but especially if your data gets long it's actually more efficient to use just one to use both of them now that we've pushed all of the strikeout rows to out we're going to log that entire array actually let's use console because it preserves structure Let's just log the entire array. Run that. Excellent. See what I mean about preserving structure here? Let me show it the other way so we can see what the difference is in this instance between logger and console. There's other differences. Consoles show more information, but here we can see logger just spits it out as a single line. 
it still has all the correct data. The data is identical, but this one just has it all in one line, whereas this one actually maintains and preserves the structure that we're looking for. All right, now that we know that our data is correct, we're going to push that out to, we're going to set that on the out spreadsheet. So s out dot get range. Our range is going to be the first empty column, sorry, the first empty row, which we can find by using s out dot get last row and adding one. Our column is the first column. The number of rows is however many rows is in out. We don't know what that is necessarily right now, but we do know that the number of columns is three. So here's my signature for getting the entire range that we're looking for. What row, what starting row, let me say it that way. What row do we want to start the range on? What column should the range start on? How many rows and how many columns? Then we're going to set values and the values is this out array object that we created. So show it's empty here, run it. It's still gonna show us the two because we left the logger and the console logs. But now we come over here and it does have all the data that we wanted. Perfect. Again, this can be used with any action and any type of formatting, bold, italics, foreground color, background color, whatever you need. But for the way we did it here, we're getting the two, we're getting two sets of information from the spreadsheet, the values on the data range and the rich text values on the data range where the rich text values include formatting information that we can use for any of the actions that we want. The way we're doing it here is to check the, the formatting on each row. And if the formatting matches, then we're taking an action on the values is how we're doing it here so that we can most simply operate through each row, get the formatting, do what we want with it. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if this has helped you, please do all the normal social stuff, like subscribe, share, comment. I do try to stay active in the comments and you can also connect with me on email, LinkedIn, Twitter slash X the Google product expert forums. So if you just need help getting my script working on your use case, always happy to help out there. If you have a larger project, a larger need, I also do private consultations and trainings as needed.